Hi, in this slide I want to focus on the second adjective of the 10 F's, that's forward. And forward suggests that we have some strategic vision that we're moving towards. So if we think of Lewis and Clark, their goal was to follow a compass and just keep heading west until they couldn't go any further. They didn't know at the outset that they were basically going to blaze a new trail that became known as the Oregon Trail that a zillion settlers would then follow moving out to, to settle the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Columbus also had a very uh, vague but, but very firm strategic direction. He was going to sail west to get east. Now his model for how round the earth was was 6,000 miles around. If he'd come across Aristosthenes' uh, geometry uh, from 280 BC or thereabouts, uh, Aristosthenes, who was a Greek running the, the the library in Alexandria, Egypt, had, you know, I'll, the short story is he had come up with a way of figuring out that the Earth was 25,000 miles around. It was off by about 1%. So anyway, when Columbus got to the West Indies, he called it the West Indies because he thought he'd gone far enough to be halfway around the world, and therefore he was in, in, in the Indies, um, when in fact he discovered a whole new world that basically dwarf the idea of uh, trading for spices and silk. So what happens when we get confidence to leave the shore, the side of the shore, you know, what we're comfortable with in the past, then that allows us to have uh, extra unusual serendipity, cool stuff we didn't plan on happen. But I, I would say in a sense we're making our luck because he, he, he did have a direction and a rough plan and so forth. He also illustrates that when you go down a certain alley, you don't know if it's going to become a boulevard of a whole new world with galleons full of, of, of gold from the Incas and the best basket of natural resources in the world, that would be North America, or it's going to be a dead end, but because we designed the experiment to go down the alley so well that the learning value exceeds the tuitional expense we paid. Now, the next two points, I'm going to try to draw a contrast between strategic innovation process and following the herd. If in a strategic innovation process we get a vision based on some informational insight, so we do line item profit analytics, we find there's huge cross subsidies in the profitability of some of our customers and some of our items and our suppliers, our sales territories, however you want to look at it, then we say, why, 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 why? We push the wheel of learning and we come up with some insights. So then we say, all right, based on our insights, let's do a small, cheap, baby step experiment. We don't have to change the whole company tomorrow. We could start with one account in one territory and da, 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 um, and then see what happens. And then what we'll do is once we you know, get success pushing the wheel of learning, we can systematically uh, turn that into like a little formula or a script, and then we can scale it across the, the company, which would be great. Now, what are our goals for, you know, are we going to double our sales and quadruple our profits, roughly speaking, in our, our historic core at each branch? Uh, we don't know. I mean, it's going to be big. So it's big enough to figure out how to start moving forward and acting. And later on, we'll get much better at setting, uh, you know, goals and milestones within a new framework of, of how we operate and whether we're in control or not. But contrast that to, you know what, I'm not doing anything unless there's a proven recipe. Well, that's a nice idea, Bruce, but who else has done this? Think of that question. Who else has done this? If there's somebody who's already done it and your biggest head-to-head -head competitor, there's no sense in your doing it at all. There's no value. Maybe you need to do it to minimize the losses. In other words, if you want to survive, you better really get at your button gear and, and close the gap they've opened up on you so that you, you minimize your losses. There's no gains here. There's no, no upside. So if you feel very comfortable doing lots of little fine tunings of the past, rearranging furniture in the deck of the Titanic, um, that's fine, but you're not going to have any breakthrough results. And the truth of the matter is, I think in the long run, you're going to be eating a lot of dust following the rest of the herd, and you're going to be changing slower than the rest of the herd and the environment, and you're going to be dying slowly. You just don't know it. So... Uh, that's why we have to have a vision and start moving towards the vision in little baby step failure learning steps and experiments. End of that sermon. Thank you.